Today we are taking a look at a mouse that I never honestly thought that I would even consider purchasing. The final installment of the God series, the Starlight 12 Poseidon by Final Mouse. Let's go ahead and start by getting the absolutely unreal price tag out of the way. This mouse retails for $189, but that is a pretty large asterisk because of scalpers and bots that pretty much snipe these mice the second that they drop. For anyone who is unsure of how Final Mouse releases their mice, basically they only drop them in small batches and once they are out of stock, they are officially out of stock. And this basically leaves you with the aftermarket in terms of purchasing one of these mice. Me and my significant other both had alarms set to try and cop one of these mice organically, but within 10 seconds of having one in each of our carts, we were already out of luck. I really wanted to see if all the hype was necessary, and this mouse in particular has an allure that piqued my interest. And since I love collecting mice, I figured it would be nice to add to the collection. With that being said, let's go over the features with this mouse and see if the $300 price tag that I paid was actually worth it. The materials for this mouse are a little weird, which is why I'm mentioning it. Basically, the outer shell is made of magnesium, but the base is made of plastic. It comes with Kale GM8s. It weighs about 46 grams on the medium. It's a little bit lighter for the small. And for the sensor, it has a proprietary final sensor. Aside from that, it is a very, very simplistic mouse. There is no software associated with this mouse, but there is a DPI switch that allows you to step between 400, 800, 1600, and 32 DPI with a locked pulling rate of 1000 Hertz. As of the shape, if you already have something like the Glorious Model O or even the G Pro X Super Light, then you are already familiar with the feeling of this mouse. The hump is located directly in the center, just like those mice, but it is a little bit more shallow than the G Pro X Super Light, and it has a little bit more in terms of length than the Model O. Some of you might think that the magnesium shell being metal might feel cold to the touch, but honestly, I've never noticed that it's made of metal. It feels just like a much, much more premium version of almost any other plastic mouse. Now it's time for everybody's favorite part of the video. Here's how the clicks and scroll wheels sound for all of you weirdos that enjoy that. Bouncing off of that topic, this mouse has very little pre-travel, but it does have some post-travel, and that might be kind of a turnoff for some people. The battery life for this mouse is incredible. I use this mouse for about one to two hours a day, every night, and I've only charged it once since I unboxed it, but that was just to see how the cable felt. They state that the battery can last up to 160 hours, which makes sense considering there are no lights or software, but it just does what it does. Since I already mentioned the cable, I feel like I should go into a little bit more detail about this cable. It is a braided cable that actually feels pretty similar to a paracord. Honestly, I didn't even realize that it was connected, but I also had it on a bungee, so that might have made a difference, but I thought this was pretty incredible because normally I can tell at least a little bit of resistance from the cable, even if it is an aftermarket paracord. This cable definitely isn't perfect, but if you were in a pinch and needed to play with it plugged in, I don't think you'd really notice a difference. The weight here is something I didn't really think was going to make that much of a difference. Heavier mice such as the G303 are normally my go-to mice, and I never really bought the whole lighter is more gooder mentality. This mouse comes pretty close to feeling like there is nothing in my hands. So once your arm adjusts to not really feeling the mouse, it will definitely help you move faster just because there is simply less material to move and less force required. This mouse performs exactly like it should for the games that I played. I've seen graphs that show the differences in latency of different mice and this mouse is 
kind of sat right in the middle of all of them. It has a wireless latency of 11 milliseconds and 6.5 milliseconds while it is wired, where the G Pro X Super Lite is 3.1 milliseconds wireless and 2.5 milliseconds wired. I'm really more of a casual player that enjoys competitive games these days, but if you're the kind of person that is really sensitive to eight milliseconds of delay, then this might not be the mouse for you. Let's go over the elephant in the room, the quality control issues that people have been discussing. These complaints seem fairly justified considering the hefty price tag associated with this mouse. My scroll wheel is definitely crooked, but I saw in the Discord that this was by design to make the click of the scroll wheel a little bit more consistent. I've seen fixes for this, but honestly, I've never even noticed it as a problem aside from aesthetics, and I'm almost never actually looking at my mouse. I completely understand why this would be an issue to have such a horrible look after spending upwards of $200 on a product, but it doesn't really affect me or my gameplay, so I'm not too focused on that. My base doesn't seem to have any flex in it, it. It's possible that I just got lucky, but I've never really been in a situation where I'm smashing the bottom of my mouse so hard that it could possibly break. My copy doesn't have a lot of wiggle or flex in the mouse one and mouse two buttons, so maybe again I got lucky or they possibly upgraded it in the Poseidon, but I'm not really noticing it. Final Mouse did something that I honestly couldn't believe, which is give me a mouse with things that I didn't even know that I wanted. I've used plenty of lightweight mice in my years of gaming, but this mouse is by far a step ahead of everything else that I've tried. After just a few days of using this mouse, I saw my scores in Kovacs and Aim Labs increase by almost 15%. Now, I'm definitely not a god at these games, but it felt good to consistently improve just by changing mice. I'm normally the kind of person that has a different mouse based on mood, but I find it difficult to go back to other mice after using this mouse. It could be because I feel obligated to justify the price tag, but it has a lot to do with the overall feel of this mouse. I can't believe that I'm saying this, but I can actually look at you with a straight face and tell you that I would happily purchase another copy if anything were to ever happen to mine. I definitely don't think this mouse is for everyone simply because of the price tag, and if they were to drop the price to closer to $120, then I could see this mouse being on the top of the charts in terms of popularity. Now let's go over my final thoughts of the final mouse, Starlight 12 Poseidon, starting with the pros and the cons. For the pros, this mouse has a very comfortable and safe shape. It also comes with a better than normal cable. It has great battery life. And if you're into the whole lighter is more gooder thing, then this mouse is incredibly lightweight. For the cons, the click latency is about average. Also, the Swiss cheese look might be a bit of a turnoff for some people. And most of all, the price. The price tag for this mouse is insane. All in all, I absolutely love this mouse and I'm so glad that it's part of my collection. But with that being said, I don't necessarily think that this mouse is going to be taking over in terms of my daily driver, largely because of things such as the lack of software and customization. This mouse is incredible if you only play competitive games, but for a lot of the task management type stuff that I usually do, I need at least a little bit of customization. I like to be able to program the side buttons to do different things based on different programs, but that might not be so much of a problem for you. And with all of that being said, thank you very much everybody for watching. I hope you guys all enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button. And also, if you guys have any thoughts, questions, concerns, or would even like to ask questions about the Starlight 12, feel free to leave a comment down below. It's greatly appreciated. And have a wonderful day, not because I told you to, but because you should.